So, continuing with telecommunications, telecommunicating with you all. Um, uh, some aspects that you should keep in mind, um, uh, well, in, in communications in general, um, the single point of failure. Um, now, this is, uh, this is a very common problem in all kinds of systems, um, but you, you've got to be particularly careful with it with communications. You know, where, um, where is the single point of failure? Um, the, uh, I think I've mentioned the Hillsborough Fire. I, I think I may even have told you the uh, um, story of the company that uh, got uh, two communications channels with two separate providers making sure that they did not send the uh, information over the same cable and both cables ran through the Hillsdale vault. So, um, you know, having, uh, you know, everybody depending on your provider for, um, uh, the internet, um, you know, you, depending on how important your communications are, you may want to have leased lines. You may want to put in T1 service or T3 service. Um, you, you might want to, uh, go there with, again, separate providers, or you may have, want to have multiple, uh, internet providers, uh, trying to ensure that, again, they don't both, uh, depend on the same channel, um, the same backbone service. Um, frame relay is, uh, uh, one of the old networking systems that um, does uh, provide us with uh, sort of a backdrop. Um, uh, well, it's, it's interesting to see how uh, uh, some of the older technologies um, will uh, help you out. Uh, some of them are more reliable. Um, uh, uh, X25, uh, um, you know, very slow, very, very limited in bandwidth. Um, uh, I mean, you, you cannot push it very fast. Um, and in terms of modern speeds that we, you know, think about, you know, gigabit uh, internet to the home, um, you know, it's, it's ridiculous. Um, but... Uh, I remember uh, one of the people in, in one of my seminars uh, told me that she worked with military people and they told her that they could go and set up an X-25 link over barbed wire out in the field, barbed wire fencing. And uh, I said, no, they, they probably could because it has, um, you know, a lot of resilience to any kind of interference. It's got a lot of error checking. This is, this is why it's so slow. But it is available. Um, so, you know, uh, don't overlook the older technologies. Um, so, uh, again, uh, you know, the best way to eliminate disasters is to uh, identify your single points of failure and build in redundancy. Um, uh, you, you know, people often neglect to check for single points of failure. And, and uh, in, in a sense, then you, you build in, you know, you just think, you know, oh, well, we hope this doesn't go down. Well, you know, hope doesn't provide much resilience. Uh, so be careful of consolidated equipment, consolidating equipment. Um, as I say, you know, they, uh, we used to have separate voice and data channels, and, and now everything, everything is going over, uh, you know, basically an internet backbone. And, uh, you know, whether it's on TCP IP, whether it's on ATM, what, whatever it's, it's built on, because it's one entity, you know, when, when part of it goes down, it basically the whole thing goes down. So, um, deploy redundant equipment. As we keep on saying, redundant backup is not redundant if you need it. So, um, you know, be, uh, 
be careful in that regard. Um, uh, that you know, now that's that's only one, but it's a big one in in telecommunications. Um, now we come to the question that everybody always asks, you know, is the internet secure? Answer A, yes. Answer B, yes for availability. Uh, answer C, no uh, for implementation. And uh, answer D is no. Now, I mean... The thing is that the internet is secure, but it was built to be secure for availability. It, it was concentrated on availability. And, and, I mean, you know, let's face it, it was a test bed. Um, nobody at the beginning uh, probably ever saw what, uh, you know, we're seeing today in, in terms of the vast uh, dependence on the internet. And the use for, uh, you know, commerce. Um, basically, it was a test bed for trying out a system to ensure the reliability and availability of uh, communications. And that's what it was built for. And, and it does a very, very good job. Um, I can remember a story. It's another NASA story, but... Uh, um, and uh, when they tried out, um, first time they tried out uh, connecting to the internet, and because they were very leery, I mean, you know, any time anybody uh, even whispered that they had broken into a NASA system, NASA's budget got slashed by $10 million. So, you know, they were very, very careful in testing it out and what they did was they they took a machine they connected it um, uh, and in the connection they actually sheared off the transmit pin so that they could not send any data to the internet and to test this out they sent out a ping and they got a response well if you can't transmit any data how the heck did you get a response and uh, what they found was it was uh, the, the machine they were testing was in fact connected to the local area network on the local area network somebody had in fact um, got a uh, an account with a local university or college that was in those days that was the way you did it and um, had been on the line with the college at the time that they conducted their test so you know uh, okay, here's one channel doesn't work, let's find another channel. And, and you know, internet will always find a way. Um, it is good for availability. But nobody ever thought about it in terms of confidentiality. So um, you've, you've got to think about these things. You know, what, what is it that you are using the communications for? What is primarily important to you? Um, you know, which aspect of security and, you know, what is, uh, what do you have to add to address the particular security needs that you are requiring of your particular communication system?